Now, the first time that I cheated on my wife, and I noticed I said the first time, the first time I cheated on my wife, it was one of the most lowest moments I could ever uh, be in in my life. And a level of brokenness, a level of shame hits you uh, automatically once you once you leave that the, the place that the affair happened. And I remember just literally wanting to pull over on the side of the street and just throw up. I'm on a journey to discover, uncover, and recover love. Now as a national playwright, I've penned dozens of shows about relationships. As a filmmaker, I've documented the most beautiful committal of lovers at weddings. And as a divorcee, I know firsthand the brevity of marriage and the pain of its loss. I'm the Terrace R. Whitfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, the Terrace R. Whitfield. Listen, I'm so excited about today's episode. I have a good buddy in studio with us today uh, from one of my favorite shows, and I loved it because it was shot here in Dallas, Texas. He has a master's degree in education and counseling from the hit show, Cheaters. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast, my homie, Joey Greco. All right, thanks. So, Joey. Yeah. I think what we're going to call this episode, I think we're going to call it To Cheat or Not to Cheat. Okay. That is the question. Man, welcome. How are you doing today? Man, I'm good. It's good to see you. Man, what have you been up to? You know, I just bopping around, you know, pushing forward. That's all we can do, especially now. I heard you've been doing your thing in real estate, huh? Yes. Uh, and actually, I've, I've done that in the background since, I mean, since 99. Oh, really? So since before the show. And then, uh, you know, obviously I wanted to um, kind of limit my exposure <laughs> yeah. to or limit my access uh, after the show. And uh, so I kept it on the, you know, in the in background. The background. Yeah. But, um, you know, uh, after 2012... When, uh, you know, and you can say it any way you want, but, you know, when it comes right down to it, I didn't continue with the show. Right. I mean, there was nothing acrimonious that went on. It was just show business. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, that was 2012. Um, was I had a place in L.A. that I was going back and forth. I just stayed out in L.A. a little bit longer and um, kept Dallas as my home, but uh, got my license in L.A. in California. For real, so estate? Was, for real estate, I ended up spending so much time developing a new business in order to stay in LA yeah, because it's just yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, uh, that cost of living ain't no that, joke. Uh, that I just went, you know what? This is nuts. Why am I doing that? Let me just go home. Everything that you, everything that you do now in the industry, not everything, but many things in the industry are uh, taped submissions, or recorded yeah. submissions, yep. which you can do from anywhere. So. Definitely. Uh, ended up coming back home uh, back a couple of years ago and uh, kind of happy. It's good Yo, to be you, back. Me, you remember, uh, I guess it's probably about 10 years ago, we were supposed to go skydiving. What year was that? I, I, I don't know, but I have I have the CD that of my skydive, the terrace. I, 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 I bailed out. I bailed out on them. I told Joey, I'm black. We don't we don't just jump out of planes. We just we we, we don't do that. So uh, I really want to do that, but then I, I I chickened out. But you know what? We can still do it. Like, yeah, we, uh, we can go to iFly. You don't even have to leave the ground. See, I've done that. Okay, so and, you've and, done iFly, and I did really really well on that. So now I'll tell you the difference though is. When you're coming down and you're floating, I mean, right. for me, the, the fun part was the the free fall. Yeah. Once the canopy opened, you realize that you are strapped to the to the guy guy with the shoot. <laughs> so at that point, you become the liability. So in case anything goes wrong, he's gonna drop you. Who, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as the canopy went up, and, and he's you know he was a nice guy he was like hey you can you can i don't well, know what you call it, it drive it you could fly oh, yeah. it or whatever you take the toggles and you can you know and he goes now now look down there see that's where we're, we're aiming that's what we're headed for can you see that and, and i'm looking and, and you know just like when you see uh you, know, you look at the plane when yeah. you're flying it just is a bunch of boxes and yeah. check marks and green and brown and and i said no i don't see i don't know what you're pointing to do you know <laughs> but he knew exactly and and uh but i made it down i just wanted to get on the ground as soon as possible isn't that like god though 
from a from a from a high vantage point, he can see where we're supposed to go, and we can't see it. Ah, I'm trying not to preach right now, Joey. You know what though? But that's a great analogy yeah. because let's look at it this way. In addition to that, is we can't do it on our own. Come on, talk about it. So we need we need the support of someone connected and, and to you. Ha- and how many times? Do we beat ourselves up over decisions and choices and stuff? And, and we feel like the liability. Oh, boy, right there. Right there. You know, and, and he's connected to you the whole time. The whole time. You, I so got you. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah it's going to be a soft landing. It's going to be a soft <laughs> just landing. Stay, just stay on. Yeah. Don't let go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. See, so, a lot of people don't know that you're a Christian. You know, what's funny is, I mean, not that this is a funny topic, but when I started with the show and on the show, uh, there's a specific format yeah, of that they kind of had. And, um, and I just went, okay, now this is really not that it's embarrassing or anything, but when they said, Hey, would you be interested in the show? And I said, uh, all right, let's, let me, I'm not familiar with it. Let me take a look. And I saw, they gave me some, some raw footage to look through. And, um, and I just went, Ugh. <laughs> I mean, on the one hand, it's what everybody wants to see. Of course. Because you know, yeah. it's entertainment and yes. drama, and that's just the way it is. On the other hand, I don't want to I don't want to feel like I have to take a shower yeah. after watching it. Yeah. Right? So uh and I just went, hey, if if we want to do this and if you know that we have to we have to be more responsible with how we handle right. situations. Right. And if we can give people a reason, you know, and if we can take the position of facilitator and helper and let's see how we can resolve things if they, yeah. and, and just kind of just shift a little bit, then people will still get to see what they want and then they'll feel okay about themselves yeah, yeah. for watching what it is they know they wanted to watch anyway. So, uh, uh, but in, in essence with that, like a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that, that I would try and interject and I don't know if it's surreptitiously or not, but mm-hmm. just, you know, cause you don't want to be too, uh, yeah, you know, I, you and know, it's funny. Too I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to make a mockery of Christ. Yeah. So I wanted to be very careful with, but I still was able to introduce, yes. um, you know, biblical principles yeah. Uh, throughout the thread of that show. And some, a lot of people uh, were able it. to pick up on yeah, it. Yeah, they caught it. Um, and, and even if they didn't pick up on it, hopefully those seeds were planted. got planted. Yeah. So how responsible did you feel about, um, you know, being a catalyst for exposing people's infidelity? I don't know if I felt responsible for it. Uh, and this is the standpoint because, you know, someone, uh, you know, there's always going to be someone on Twitter or Instagram or something yeah. that's going to say something like, "How? Did, what's it feel like, you know, breaking up happy homes? <laughs> like and I want to go, who was happy? <laughs> tell me who, tell me what about that was happy for who, <laughs> you know, don't put that on me. I just, They're you know, breaking up happy homes <laughs> and, and, and even, <laughs> <laughs> so in any case, um, you know, I just, I had two rules. Uh, I'm more than two, but I think guidelines, let's call them guidelines. Every, every male was a gentleman and every female was a young lady. So anytime I addressed yeah. someone, it was, I always took that position. And my goal was everyone can make a bad decision. Right. What's what caused someone to decide to go down that path right. and what's keeping them from resolving whatever it is that needs to be resolved. I remember one day uh, the production team busted into one of my productions at the Black Academy of Arts and Letters. It was like during an admission. No, it was right at the end of the show. It's like y'all timed it perfectly because the next thing you know, I saw all these cameramen bust in there and then y'all <laughs> y'all bombarded the dude and I was like, what in the world is going on? 
I, you know, and I didn't realize that that was your, I remember, I remember <laughs> what it was. I didn't realize that no, that we, your, Yeah, we didn't know each other life. then. And I was like. No, we had to have. Yeah. Because we met at Covenant. Yes. Didn't we? Yeah, we met at Covenant Church. Yep. We were, we, we were church members. So. Uh, and you just busted up in my show. And just, yeah. You owe me an apology, so, Joey. Boom. You no, owe me an apology. I'm like, I'll, you never know where well, I'll jo- show jo- up. you owe me an apology. You, know, uh, you, you, you gotta know. apologize. It, the sh- but you just said the show was over. Well, well it was over, that was but, still, treat. But, but yeah. That's, was, a, that's a value add. <laughs> we just, for the price of admission, you got, you two, got shows, two shows. <laughs> two shows for the price of one. <laughs> Man, that is no, crazy. You no, know, you know I would never want to do that. <laughs> no, nah, it's funny, though. Why, why haven't you been married, Joey? <sighs> you know, uh, I don't know, you know. Do you want no, to be no, married? No, no, I, I, I know. I, I know. I'm not going to say that I haven't had the opportunity to be married. I think, though, what's more accurate and transparent is up until a certain point in my life, I wouldn't have been a very good partner. That's good. That's and, I, honest. and I knew that. Yeah, that's good. And for that reason, that, you know, whoever I was dating at the time, you know, I know that they would have been, you know, let's get married. Yeah, but I just never felt like uh, you know I'm too selfish, too yeah. selfish right now still, and uh, you know one particular young lady, you know we were together. With the, she met my parents and all this, and then uh, had seen my parents for the holidays. And my dad asked me. He said, "Well, you know what about what about her? What's going on with her?" And he didn't know that we weren't seeing each other anymore. And I, <laughs> you know, because. You know how your parents, you just never, yeah, you never right? tell them what was and going I, on. And I said, oh, we're not dating anymore. And he just looked at me with this quizzical look. <laughs> and he just said, what is it exactly that you're looking for? <laughs> and In front of her? No, no, she wasn't there. Oh, okay. No, it was like he and my mom. And my dad goes, what is it exactly that you're looking for? And, you know, we had some, you know, a... a a candid relationship, but yeah. never really that candid. Yeah, they really talk about. And to hear to hear him like kind of check him, you, baby. Yeah, uh, oh, over that I wanted to go. Oh, okay. And I said, "Well, Dad, this A, B, and C." And he said something to me, and he said, "Listen, um, what makes a relationship work are two parties, each giving one hundred percent." to help the other person achieve their goals. That's real. And that's real. And when you think about it from a psychological standpoint, if you and I are working on a project together, right. And we're both putting in, we're both putting in. And then I go, you know what? I can't give, I can't give a hundred percent today. Right. I'm going to only give 95. You think you're going to sense that? Yeah, and then and then what you what might you do? Dial, you probably dial, won't. You'll probably dial, still you probably still give a hundred percent. You typically dial, you know dial it back and say I'm gonna give about seventy five. Right. And then and what happens? Then you the other person goes, down. Oh well, huh. and you give seventy five, give fifty. And next thing you know, y'all offering twenty five percent, and the project and, isn't complete. And everyone's going in their own direction, right? So uh, it's something that I guess you can relate to re- any relationship. So are you at the stage now where you're actually entertaining marriage, or are you still selfish? You don't want to no, I'm life. less selfish. <laughs> you less selfish. I'm le- I, I, well, you know, who? No one thinks they're selfish. <laughs> you just said right. you was. No, I said I. I you was. was. Selfish. You were selfish. So but you can no. you can honestly admit then that you were selfish. Then yes. Um. So now I'm less selfish. Is what I mean. I don't know to what degree, and that's. <laughs> what I, I'm hope. Uh, hopefully, it will be less <laughs> enough where I can think of someone else. I like to think that I've progressed and learned, but. You know, so you like to think you did. I like to think, you know, we all look, we all entertain the thought that we are intelligent and actualized and woke and whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, everyone's woke now. Everybody woke now. Oh, well, what were you doing before? <laughs> you sleep. Yeah. So, we, uh, do you think that the show um, had some type of psychological effect on you as far as being, did it hinder you at all from a trusting standpoint? Did the show contribute to that part of my, I don't know. I, th- I think certainly it may have enhanced it a little bit. Of course. But I don't know if I can really blame right. that part of my personality on the show. However, the more things you see, yes. just like anything else. It affects uh, you. No, what is it? Uh, say you get a new car. Yeah. You get a, you know, whatever it is. You get a, get a you know, Camaro. And everywhere you look, you see a Camaro. Everywhere you look, you see a Camaro. That same car. It's a reticular activating system. Right? Yep. So now... 
when you start to look for things, yep. in re- you know, what you'd be like, Hold you on. start finding a whole bunch. 100%. Like I, I was joking around because I, I had lunch with someone and um, like they excused themselves and went to the bathroom. And when she came back, you know, it was like, like you go, all right, well, you know, just wonder how many, wonder how many phone calls to <laughs> did she do when it's she like well that was a no okay now that's i don't know how real we're gonna get but it's like no, that's you know real. When, when there's like you go well you look at the average time that it takes to go use the restroom it, it takes normally to, takes five to minutes evacuate, to evacuate right yeah it's now like, it took you about 10 <laughs> to 11 yes. minutes 11.3 minutes yeah we had to check in with you know it's like well what was going on there now and then you go, who wants to live like that? Yes. Who wants to live your life worried about every little thing? 100%. And, and that's going back to where you started this with like, all right, well, you know, live your life, move forward, push forward, grow, be a good partner, learn, learn about yourself. Uh, you know, what attracts people? Attract people, like, what is it? Vibes. Now we get into yeah. vibes. Yeah, we got vibes. Which is like, uh, uh, and I forget what it's called, but it's very similar to if you took uh, two guitars that were tuned, put them on different sides of the stage of a stage and hit the C string on one, the string on the other would vibrate. Uh, it will? Because it's, it's waves and it's vibes. So now, you know, what you focus on expands. And if someone is going around acting like, all right, I'm looking for, you know, what are you going to find? You're That's find, what you're going to find. You're going to find everything you're looking for. When you, you know, let your sails fill with air and wind and ride above that, there's an attraction that is natural that happens. And what and people are attracted to vibe and energy and, and those things that are positive. And those forces then start to attract one another. And that's where you'd rather live your life to me as opposed to, well, well, someone did this to me and someone did this to me and someone did, yeah. uh, uh, um, someone who's hurt will find offense in, in everything, everything. In everything. It can start off very simply, which is if someone doesn't feel like they're being recognized yes. and acknowledged and appreciated, whatever, then they're walking down the street and, you know, you're at work or whatever. And someone just goes, oh, you know, hey, that's a nice outfit. Yes. You look good today. Nice outfit. You know, and, and just the, the, what that releases, the chemicals that releases where someone just goes, oh, thank you. you know, that's yep. a, uh, and then little by little, you, you know, it, it doesn't always work this way, but I, it's easy to see how it can. Because then you start looking for or, the oh, there's that other person down at the co- you know at the yeah. coffee station or the lunchroom or whatever. Yep. And then it's oh, let's you know you want to meet you're here for lunch. Let's you want to sit down and have lunch. And all of yeah. a sudden you're having lunch, and then that becomes a source of um, encouragement and and the endorphins that are released. Yep. Through that interaction, start to be refreshing, and then you that makes what you're not getting at home magnified. Man, listen, um, talking about the subject matter of cheating, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't transparently talk about my own um, affair that I had when I was married. Now, the first time that I cheated on my wife, and I noticed I said the first time, uh, the first time I cheated on my wife, it was one of the most lowest moments I could ever uh, be in in my life. And a level of brokenness, a level of shame hits you uh, automatically once you once you leave that the, the place that the affair happened and I remember just literally wanting to pull over on the side of the street and just throw up and I was so broken I was so hurt I was crying and um, the crazy thing about it is that once you do it the first time it makes it easier to do it the, the second time and the mm-hmm. third time and the fourth time and um, my wife gave me so much grace going through that and um and when we were married, I always wanted to talk about this, and she would never give me the release to do it. She said, "No, I just, 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 just protect that. I want you to protect this uh, because I don't want to have to field comments and and have to answer people's questions and friends calling me, why are you still with him and all that if he did that." And so I respected her for that. And uh, but I would be remiss to have a show uh, talking about cheating, and I don't talk about the effects that it has not only on 
the person that is on the receiving end of it, uh, your wife or husband or significant other, but even the effects that you have internally. So this is actually uh, a message to my brothers, my sisters out there that are in relationships. Don't try to take the path of uh, infidelity or cheating. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lowly path. Um, and you have to rise above it Whatever situations you're going through in your marriage It can't be answered by stepping outside of your marriage And bringing someone into the marriage or relationship You know, I, I remember my wife told me this And it made me feel about this big She said, Lateris, I want to get even with you And um, cheat on you But I didn't want to become you And so that set the standard in my mind To say, you know what, uh I, I got to do better in life. I went through counseling. I went through this thing at Covenant Church. It was called CR, Celebrate Recovery. Mm, I remember. Man, when I tell you, I remember sitting at church one day and the people were on stage giving their testimonies and they were doing a big push for CR. Pastor Mike Hayes was, you know, trying to do a call to action to tell people to come join CR. And I was like, there is no way on God's green earth I will ever join a group <laughs> and be telling my business to these people. It's just not mm, going to happen. Mm, that's good for you. <laughs> yeah. That's okay for you. I said, y'all, praise, praise God. Y'all did that. But that's not going to be me. And then I remember sitting in that Sunday service and God said, you're going to join. And I said, I, no, it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. And a couple of months later, I found myself going to the orientation on that Monday night and I joined. And when I tell you that transformed my life because it allowed me to come out of the, see, sin always hides. God can't heal what you won't reveal. And so the minute you decide to reveal it, God will heal it. And um, it was the wisest decision I ever made. It's a program that took about a year to go through, exposing everything in your life, talking about your hurts, habits, and hangups. You go through a list of, you go through what they call an inventory, where you begin to write down things all the way from your childhood, basically how to get free and overcome it. And that was the most powerful thing that I ever went, went through in my life. But my wife, she's a, she, she was a strong, strong woman. And like I said, she operated in such grace and class. And so I admire her for that. And that's how she and I are still friends this very day because, you know, I was just open. I was open and transparent and shared with her what I was going through. And um, and she just covered me through it. And she watched me go through the uh, restoration process. So one thing that I would say about your show is that I remember watching. I remember watching it and secretly saying that could be me. I said, what happens if those cameras that busted in my show were turned on me? Mm -hmm. what? We, I think it could have been, it could be any of us. Yeah. I mean, male, female, it doesn't matter. Uh, there was a, uh, uh, someone that did a, a series and it was, it dealt with relationships, but how do those, uh, how they start extramarital relationships and how they start and, and where someone might be in any relationship. And, and my question to people that we were dealing with on the show frequently was when I looked at it, you go at one point in time, that other person was your life. Yes. That you would have done anything somewhere along the road. Things, you know, those paths, became divergent yeah. so what happened uh, and I remember there was a this is quite a while ago but I dated a girl we stopped seeing one another and she wanted to get back together and I was less interested in getting back together because every time that I saw her it was more about her wanting to get back together so whatever machinations she went mm -hmm. through they were they were not, to me, they did not come across as genuine. Yeah. And I sensed that. I didn't, I don't know if it was anything specific that, that was done, but I just always sensed mm -hmm. someone was trying to drag me in a direction. The moment that, that stopped and, and she could have said, you know what? It's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. We're probably never going to get back together. Then she became a person that when we ran into one another, that wasn't heavy and hanging over, over her head. <laughs>
mm -hmm. in my head or and it was a person that I saw that we began to be able to enjoy one another's company and then I remembered why I was attracted to her in the first place and we ended up getting back to you and then we broke up again later but that's another story <laughs> that's, another, that's another story <laughs> oh man I enjoyed having you on the podcast today I always love it it's always a good time uh, give it up for Joey Greco y'all my pleasure and as always it's good to see you my oh man it was fun great having you wow yep I shared my personal testimony today you know I don't believe in being hypocritical I believe in being lit and um, so today was just a befitting time to actually practice what I preach and allow y'all a little snapshot into my life Dear future wifey, I've been doing the work. I've unpacked failures from my past, folded them neatly and stored them in my testimony drawer. You see, I didn't discard my failures. I keep them as a reminder of God's healing power. As Paul declared in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. I used to be extremely embarrassed by the unfortunate fact I cheated on my ex-wife several times. I was ashamed that I lacked integrity to uphold my marriage vows and honor them as its sacredness. Now, I stand boldly in my truth. I stand boldly only because I spent many days on my face before the Lord, crying for redemption, begging for his presence, yearning for his forgiving love. I was forgiven. He forgave me. She forgave me. Most importantly, I finally forgave myself. I'm no longer a cheater. Your future hubby. Thank you for listening to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit. Live intentionally and transparently. And don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.